More now from Mohamed Munir. He is a virologist at Lancaster University in the UK. He joins us now. Thanks so much for speaking to us. I, I want to start by getting your broader opinion here. We have China, the epicenter, now on the up, while drastic measures are being taken in the US, Europe, and elsewhere. Is there more reason for hope or concern at this point? Well, if we uh, uh, take approach of, uh, you know, comparison right from the beginning, uh, China uh, in first three weeks really uh, were struggling to even identify the cause for that mysterious disease which turned out to be a coronavirus in the beginning. And it was really after three, four weeks when the control measures were put in place. So those four weeks were very precious and those were given to the rest of the community to prepare. And unfortunately, uh, we wasted it. And the control measures that are now being uh, put in place, those are relatively late, unfortunately, and uh, seems like less effective in terms of having any positive impact onto the coronavirus. But this is something that we're, uh, the situation is leading to where, uh, the, the, for example, the, uh, the, the, the travel bans, uh, the control measures within even the UK, where I, I'm speaking from, uh, are not really sufficient enough to really claim that it would have any positive impact in the near future. Okay. So essentially, we got off to a late start. Uh, that's the, the unfortunate reality of this, and we're, we're really paying the price for it now. Let me ask you this, though. I mean, as gov governments look to kind of minimize what's looking to be, be severe uh, economic damage now, would it be possible to do more selective quarantines? For example, since the vast majority you know, of people won't actually suffer severe symptoms, some of them won't even feel this virus at all, even when they're carrying it. Uh, might there be a way to quarantine just, you know, for example, the elderly or those who are already ill, the most vulnerable people instead of entire communities and societies? Uh, well, in the prevailing situation of the COVID-19, it is almost impossible for any healthcare system in any country throughout the world that they will be able to tackle the entire community, entire nation. Um, speaking on to NHS, I mean, here we have a massive burden of infectious diseases already, and same is the case in other countries. And one of the reasons that it has impacted so hard in Italy has been that the healthcare system wasn't really uh, in the in the stage where it can accommodate that scale of um, uh, patients. So it is really true that there is no any healthcare system that can accommodate that. So that also means that we left with one choice. One is that it is to delay the overall burden onto the um, healthcare system so that we can tackle that within limited resources. The second scenario is that to apply a targeted approach, really looking into the scientific evidences and the data, which group is more vulnerable, for example, we now 60 plus or um, in the window where they would have uh, severe consequences. So effort would be more on to the uh, frail people, more elderly people or the group that are more vulnerable. So if we apply a targeted approach, we won't be bleaching our resources and that would be used at the appropriate place with a lot more positive in uh, outcome. Okay. Uh, can you give us a better idea then for those who are criticizing, you know, the dramatic steps that have been taken, where the world might be today as per the coronavirus if there hadn't been massive quarantines, if large events hadn't been canceled, if flights uh, hadn't been blocked, where would we be? Well, to be honest, that is the major mistake that has happened throughout the scenario right from the beginning. In first three weeks, we know that, uh, I mean, most of the scientific community, they started believing that there was no human-to-human -human transmission. And three weeks after it was realized that there is a scientif uh, scientific evidence that human-to-human -human transmission is possible. So first three weeks were wasted just because of this one scientific uh, mistake. And that was the time when majority of the people who were leaving the Hubei province, they were the super spreader for the rest of the community. So any mistake in this delicate situation would be extremely important. And we already know that the horse is bolted, the, the, the cat is already out of the bag. So, so the approach must, have, uh, must be coming through a consolidated effort. For example, if someone say now that within the Europe, any country would be able to tackle the situation by closing the borders or shutting down the areas, 
that is almost impossible now because now every country within the Europe, they are reporting cases. So there is no point now to impose any restriction that would lead to massive social disruption, would have inconveniences and would have impact onto the trade and the economy, which ultimately will reflect back onto the disease severity and so on. So as this stands, it's a lot more important to have a blanket approach throughout the continent and similarly in other countries and different continents to really uh, put efforts together to contain the infection. Okay. Mohammed Munir, we will leave it there. Thank you so much again for joining us. We, we greatly appreciate it.